that I would be at that I would be asking you about any traditions or holidays that you have in Malaysia. So uh, Wan Yun, can you tell me of any sort of special holiday or tradition that you have in Malaysia? Chinese New Year. Oh, great. And is that your favorite time of year? I think so. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And Shinu, um, what do you normally do on Chinese New Year? Um, we we'll collect uh, a red, how to say, ang bao, a red pocket with money from parents and also from siblings and keep visiting a lot of siblings. <laughs> thank you very, thank you. And Lai, do you also have uh, not suffer? Sorry, <laughs> celebrate the um, the Western New Year as well, or do you only celebrate the Chinese New Year over in Malaysia? Mm, I only celebrate Chinese New Year. Mm. Okay, so so like Western New Year isn't a thing over in Malaysia. <laughs> mm, I but I didn't celebrate that. Okay. Oh, no, I, I, that's totally cool. I was just, I honestly just didn't know. <laughs> because obviously it's a really big thing over here, New Year. Just an excuse for uh, everybody to get drunk, usually. <laughs> and usually at midnight, everybody sends messages to everybody else saying Happy New Year. So the, the mobile networks get completely, like, they break. Because there are just that many people texting at the exact same time. And Peggy, is there another um, another traditional holiday that you celebrate in Malaysia? Mm. Some in in Malaysia, we have many uh, culture uh, such as Deepavali, which is Indian celebrate. Uh, so, and also have uh, how to say it. Uh, uh, <laughs> In Malaysia, we have many holiday, uh, and so some of the festive celebration we don't have celebrate it, but we also have holiday. Mm -hmm. Can you can you give me an example of a specific one? Deepavali, uh, and New Year. Ah, okay, so. Do you only celebrate the Chi Chinese uh, ones? Are you personally? Uh, I only celebrate Chinese New Year. Okay, thank you for uh, thank you for telling me about that. And Angela, wh what about you? Is there another festival or traditional holiday that you celebrate in Malaysia? Um. Any festival, ah? Uh? What, what is your question? Uh, sorry, which is it? Could you say that again, Angela? I didn't quite catch what you said. Well, can you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. So is there another um, festival or traditional holiday that you celebrate in Malaysia? I think all Chinese festival, I think. Chinese New Year, or uh, God, uh, the, I also don't know how to say. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I just know the Chinese name. Okay, okay, that's right. Some people celebrate lots of holidays and some people don't celebrate as many. Um, Alaya, what about you? What sort of things, what sort of holidays do you celebrate? <laughs> for me, actually, I agree with Bay because Malaysia have a lot of culture. For, for example, Chinese New Year for Chinese and Deepavali for Indians. And for me, as a Muslim, we celebrate Hari Raya. Okay, can you tell me what that is? Um, which one? Hari Raya? Mm -hmm, yeah. 
Okay, so example, uh, eh, it's okay. uh, normally uh, Hari Raya and Chinese New Year is the same one. We celebrate with family uh, and collect okay. money. And when, when in the year do you celebrate this? For this year, we celebrate in May. Okay, so you have quite a while to wait then. <laughs> okay, and Core, I also noticed that you don't have your camera on, Core. Can you turn on your camera, please, Core? Great, excellent. Now, is there something specific that you celebrate, specific holiday? So Chinese, anything other than Chinese New Year? Uh, for me, I think, no, I also celebrate Chinese New Year. Okay, and so I get from everything everyone's saying that you don't have uh, Christmas over in Malaysia? Uh, we do, but not everyone celebrates that. Oh, for the, just uh -huh. Christians, I think, the most. Oh, you know, over here in the UK, everybody celebrates it, even if they're not Christians. You don't have to be religious to celebrate it. It's just a, an ex a lovely excuse to spend time with family and get each other presents. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cor. And Anthony, do you think, do you normally celebrate Christmas? Do you think you'd like to celebrate Christmas? Um, yes, I, I like to celebrate Christmas. Oh, yeah. wow. Uh, and what's your favorite thing about Christmas? Um, I think it's a lot of food can eat and we can exchange the uh, exchange the present. Uh huh. Yeah, so I think it's very fun. So I yeah. like it. Oh, definitely. But I imagine you never have snow, right, on Christmas? Yeah, we, we don't have snow. Yes, that's something you will experience if you ever come to the UK. You will are very highly likely to experience snow. And Lim, Lim Chun Hun, could you tell us a little bit about a holiday that you celebrate in Malaysia? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, everybody. So I sent a message to all of you about your your words and your your groups. Now, unfortunately, my my son has run away with my phone so that he can watch cartoons. So I don't have the the groups, but I vaguely remember who is with who in your groups. So did you manage to write those two definitions? together. Oh, that's wonderful. So what I would like you all to do is, so uh, in groups, I would like you to simply, okay, do you have the share screen function on your end or do you have to be hosts the share screen? I'm not sure if you have that permission to do that. So can you all see a little share screen function? Or is that not something that's on your Zoom? I can just briefly ask. The admin. If not, you can use the Zoom chat and explain. Okay, so group one, I believe was Shinro, Peyi, and was it Anthony in group one? Yes, it's Anthony, me, and Peyi. Okay, wonderful. So would you mind starting by telling everybody your word? And if you can't share the screen so that we can all see your word? Oh, um. I think I can share the screen. Okay, great. But if each of you could take a turn to read 
each definition so that each of you just get a turn to speak. Okay. Can you all see this? Yes. Oh, that's, oh, that's so lovely. It looks great. Um, <laughs> so our group members is me and Peggy and also Anthony. And the word we get is wrinkle pickle. So the first definition is a type of shoe with a long pointed tool, which was once very popular in rock and roll fans in the 1950s. Uh, next, could Anthony help me to read? Okay, a type of shoe with a long pointed toe, which was once very popular in British people who like to eat wearing with wrinkles new as a snack in the 1910s. And then a type of shoe with a long pointed toe, which was once very popular in older men's fashion in the 1890s. Hmm. Okay, all of the, your English, by the way, was correct. You've done a great job, guys. This is really good. Okay, so the rest of the class, you have to try to guess which is the correct definition. Please do not cheat because <laughs> that just spoils the whole fun of this okay so group two three and four which one do you think is if you could just enter in the chat like what everybody thinks Okay, so when you're in, you're in group two, you're in group two, aren't you? So we have one from group two. Are you all in agreement? <laughs> How about everybody else in the class? What do you think? As I said, please don't, don't check it. Just you have to just try to guess which one you think it is. So we have one vote for the first one. <laughs> okay, someone else thinks the answer is one. Uh huh. another person thinks it's number one. Okay, so I think that's one from each group then. Okay, so as you know, it looks like the other groups all think the answer is number one. So can you tell us the correct answer? Um, well, the answer is one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's really good. Okay, so let's keep this on the screen now. So I want to ask the other groups, why how did you know that it was number one? So for instance, okay, so if I ask Wen Yun, Wen Yun, how did you know it was number one? What made you pick this one? I just guessed and I think I saw it before. Oh, <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. And Angela, why did you pick number one? I also guess uh, and I think the number one is more suitable is most suitable do you say yes okay now there are I can guess why people didn't pick two and three but I'm just going to 
first of all, ask you all first. <laughs> uh, and Lai, uh, what was, why did you pick number one? Um, because I think the first one is the I mean, easiest definition. And others, I think, uh, it has some. Um, I think it has some mistakes. Ah, uh, yeah, the third one does have one mistake in it. And it is. Just old men's fashion. That's it. Okay. And I think the reason why people didn't pick number two is because it's a little bit, it's very specific. I mean, I really like it. It was really good. I really liked it. Um, yeah, and it makes sense. I love how you've um, made it pick this because it's here as well. I really like that. It's very clever. However, it is very specific and people, and it's also logically unlike, unlikely as well. So it's unlikely you'd wear a certain pair of shoes just because of something you eat, even if it is strange or a delicacy. So has anybody ever eaten snails in this class? So they are a delicacy in France, actually. And I ate a snail once. I didn't like it um, at all. So you don't eat the shell. It's like the, the slug bit that you eat. But I ate it in a restaurant in the UK. And you know that if you want to try something native to a particular country, you really should do it in the actual country itself. So like it, I've been to Italy. The Italian food that we eat over here tastes nothing like it's supposed to. Um, I met my Chinese students from one of a pre from a previous class that I taught. They took me to the best. They they said it was the best Chinese restaurant in Glasgow, but they said even though it was the best in Glasgow, it didn't taste anywhere near as delicious as the real Chinese food in China. <laughs> and it was so good. I loved it so much. Such good food. Okay, thank you so much. Do you want to, because um, I see that you have a couple of the slides, do you want to show them to us? Because you put um, so much effort. <laughs> yes. So uh, this is the actual wrinkle picker shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is just a sample of examples. And, and are those strawberries? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Strawberry pies. Okay, yeah, you've got a lot of it. Oh, I like that. That's nice. So that's all from it. Thank you. If you could, if you could ever bake that, then I, I, I could be your official taster. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. You did a really, really good job on that. It's fantastic. And in group two, I believe it was Wan Yun. Um, Alaya and Nicholas in group two. So anyone from group two? Is am I correct? Was it in group two? It was Wan Yun, yes. Alaya, Alaya, and Nicholas. Okay, is Nicholas here today? Oh, okay. You <laughs> just simple. Okay, should I start first, Wan Yun? Sorry, can you say that again, Alaya? We can see, we can see it, but we I didn't quite catch what you said. So our group is uh, about rounds about. So the first one is a roundabout which has bunch around. 
and the second one is an unskilled worker or laborer. And the third one is a slang name of for a person who work on a life work. Okay, those are really good definitions. Really, really good. So now it's up to group one and group three to try to guess what it, which one it is. So what do you think? Okay, so from group one, group one, okay, okay everyone has a different choice. <laughs> so we have, uh -huh, one vote for three. Most people are going for number two. Okay, so any, any votes at all? <laughs> Anthony, you haven't added your vote. <laughs> okay, I think, I, I don't know where Anthony is. <laughs> But he's the only person who hasn't voted. <laughs> okay, so the majority of people think the answer is number two. We had one vote for number three. So why don't group two, why don't you tell us which one is the right answer? The second one is the correct definition for the word. Okay, great. So a lot of people got this one right as well. <laughs> you find that this often does, does happen, that people just kind of guess. It's like an art form getting writing good false definitions. <laughs> okay. Oh. Wait, could you could you keep it up, please, uh, Alaya? Because I were going to discuss some of your definitions. Thank you so much, Alaya. Okay, so uh, the I'm just going to go to chat and ask people why they chose what they chose. So, um, Shino, why did you not think it was one or three? Um, actually, it's based on my common sense because the first and the third definition has the word related to the, the word given. So only the second one is not really related. <laughs> yeah, logical deduction. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. And uh, Kor, what about you? Why did you not pick one or three? Uh, I, um, because the definitions have like the words related to the first one and um, just my like just uh, guess I think and because usually for the definitions um, to make um, them believe that it was the the definition of the word they usually put uh, the um like how to say like the definitions uh they usually have the uh like the words in the word do not okay same. i yeah i understand so like roust roundabout is very similar to roustabout yes. uh, you know so um, usually they put this like to confuse them well, I'll, I'm just going to share with with all of you um, what, so when I did this with the class, um, so I created my false definitions, 
one of the best false definitions I ever came across for roused about was the 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 name of a mobile or you know, traveling um, <laughs> Hungarian fast food uh, fast food cart. And I thought that sounded so believable. <laughs> so, you know, like, you know, the people who, who have like a cart that they push around and sell food, like from the food of Hungary, and they're like, oh, roustabout, get your food, Hungarian food at the roustabout. And I thought that sounded so believable. <laughs> okay, so there is one language mistake in one of these definitions. Does anybody know where it is? It's something that's missing, not something that's actually there. Everything that's there is fine, but there's something missing, uh, like a, a word to make more grammatical sense. Can anybody spot it? Okay, I'll help you a little bit. It's in the first one. There's a mistake in the first one. Anybody know what it is? It's not has bushes. As I said, it's nothing that's there. It's something that's missing. Something's not there that needs to be there. So I'm going to use the annotation feature to, so it should be the final word of the sentence. Anybody know? Oh, Wen Yen, yes, I just noticed it, well done. So it has bushes around it. So a roundabout which has bushes around it, or we can say, so let's say, the, I'm gonna type the whole sentence into the chat for everybody to see. Roundabout which has bushes around it, or an alternative way we could say, we could say this is a roundabout which is surrounded by bushes. Then it's also passive as well, passive voice. Because we have around, but around needs to be around something. So it needs a direct object. And the it would refer back to the roundabout. So just a cohesion issue. Thank you so much, Aliyah. You guys in group two have done a really good job. Okay, now group three, you do have a missing member, um, but I think you will survive without Jeff, unless Jeff had the, the word and all the definitions. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> so in group three, we had Angela, Core, and Lai. Uh, did Jeff and I share my screen? Pardon, sorry? Uh, can I share my screen? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Jijek, can I see it? Yes, we can see it. Uh, so the word our group got is discombobulate. And I will want to let our teammates to read the first meaning. The first meaning is to make someone feeling uncomfortable, not wanting to talk or be with you. The second is to confuse or make things more childish and confusing. Uh, and the third meaning is to do something not correct and against the law, mainly by abusing or bullying someone. Okay, really good, really good definitions. 
also group one and two. Which one do you think it is? Just something I want to point out to group three, so who's part of who with their word, is that you haven't actually used any of the structures that we've been concentrating on the last two lessons. So you were supposed to use relative, um, relative phrases, um, such as who, which, that, when or where, and also to try to use some passive uh, language as well, so the passive voice. So just remember that when we do exercises like this in the future, the, the purpose of them is usually to practice the target structures that we've been learning in class. And the reason I was teaching you those classes is because some of you are having difficulty with your writing in terms of writing complex sentences. So this is the reason why I chose for us to actually look at, so write relative, uh, relative phrases, relative clauses, because that is a way to make your sentences longer. And these sentences are actually long and fine. Okay, so we have, so someone has said number two. Any other guesses at all? Okay, we have a vote for number one. Any more guesses? Okay, any more votes? So Nicholas, you've been very quiet this class. Uh, Peyi, have you cast your vote as well? Ah, Laya, just in time to give your vote. <laughs> Which of these <laughs> definitions do you think match discombobulate? Okay, thank you, Alaya. So who hasn't given a vote? Uh, Pei Yi, could you also vote as well, please? Okay, so everyone's torn between one and two. Interestingly, no one's gone for number three. I found that very interesting. Okay, everybody, um, group three even, can you reveal to us which is the true definition? The true definition is number two. Yes, number two. And the pronunciation of this word is chaotic. Chaotic. Okay, everybody. Interesting that some of you went for number one because there is a, a, a mistake in number one. There's a language error in it. Can anybody spot where it is? You can just click on the annotation tool and underline it. So this is something that is there. It's, wor it's a word formation error.
and it would affect the rest of the sentence as well, but only a slight rewording for the second half of the sentence. But can anyone spot the word formation error? Yes, Van Yun again. Oh, <laughs> it is. It's feeling here. It should be feel. Ah, yes, because if we change this to feel, it does require we change a, the second half a little bit. So it should say to make someone feel uncomfortable. Uh, uncomfortable. I'd put like a slash there. A yeah, slash. Um, I'll just think I'll type it out. Let me get rid of the invitation. Go back to the chat. So to make someone feel uncomfortable or like they do not want to talk or be with you. Now, using like in this way is very informal. And we want to write that more formally as though to make them feel as though they don't want to talk or be with you now i was correct i was marking a piece of writing yesterday and just this reminds me of that piece of writing is that whether you choose to write more informally or formal really depends on the instructions and the task that you have to write. So if you have to, in the writing part two of the exam, if you have to write a letter to a friend, then you can you can write more informally. But if you're asked to write like an article for a school assignment, like a school essay, then you would be expected to use more formal language. And that all goes towards the criterion called communicative achievement. So it just linked to that example I used there. So it makes someone feel uh, uncomfortable or like they do not want to talk or be with you. Or we can say to make someone feel uncomfortable or as though they do not want to talk or be with you. Okay. Now, also, just want to go back here, do something not correct and against the law are not synonymous exactly. And I think this is probably why nobody picked number three, because not correct is just like right and wrong as in like a test, but against the law is significantly more serious. And technically bullying isn't really against the law. It's against the rules of an establishment, but it's not against the law as such. So there's a lot of mismatching in terms of logic here, like the severity or degree of meaning. So not correct is nowhere near as serious as against the law. Abusing somebody, well, you can't abuse somebody, but the definition of abuse is you know, not very clear cut. So certain types of abuse are against the law, but abuse in general, not too sure. And bullying someone isn't necessarily against the law, but definitely against the rules. So there was a, a mismatch here in terms of the words and expressions you used and the, you know, what they mean. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. You've all done a, fun, like, a really fantastic job. I didn't actually expect presentations at all. And I'm so glad that we did this exercise because I've always wanted to see you all get more engaged by doing project type stuff uh, in our classes. Hopefully you enjoyed doing this. And if you did, hopefully you can let me know and we can do more stuff like this in the future. I love project type work. <laughs> okay, everybody. So I'm going to give you uh, a little, oh, where did it go?
I couldn't see it on my share screen. Like I was just trying to share my screen. Ah, there it is. Okay, everyone. So what we're going to be doing, obviously we could only start some of this in the class uh, before our break. Now we've already done this. So this is our agenda for today. We've done this already. So we can, you know, we can highlight this red for done. I'm gonna look at listening part two. And then we're going to have a look at using reported speech. Now, does anybody know what reporting reported speech is? If you think you do know, just switch on your microphone or if you just want to have a guess. No. Okay, yeah, so it's like when you say like, um, he said, she said, it's when you report what somebody else has said. We have specific grammar and structures for grammatical structures that you would use and specific tense that you would use with specific modals for reported speech. So it's essentially reporting what somebody else has said. So she he said, she said, or they argued, they argued that, a little bit more formal. She said, so she said, she thought she had taught the class before. So structures like this, for example, we'll, go, we'll be going through this in much more detail soon. Okay, so today we're starting with some listening practice from listening part two. And I just have some general exam advice here. This is advice that you can also find, of course, in your course textbook. So some of, I know that a lot of this information is very similar for all parts of the listening exam. You know, just general things like trying to predict what kind of word is expected. So whether it's going to be a noun or the name of a color, or is it going to be an adjective? Is it going to be a time expression? You know, trying to predict what it is you might hear really will help, absolutely. But also, it's also important to choose the right information. So if you know you need, for example, a type of animal in the gap, the speaker will probably mention several types of animals, which are not the correct answer. So you're not just listing for a type of animal, you need to be able to distinguish which one is the correct. Okay. And for the listing, you need to write the words as you hear them without changing them in any way. So I can't remember right now, but if the listing will mark, award you half marks. I can't remember. I know I've marked your listenings, but I can't, I can't remember right now. I think it, I think it doesn't. So if you write, if the word, for example, is, um, uh, is deer, deers, like the animal deer, but you write deer instead of deers, then that's technically an incorrect answer. So if you hear the thing in the plural, or the third person or in the infinitive, you have to write it exactly as you hear it. And that's very important for you to get the mark. Okay. If you think you found the word or you've heard the word, make sure to then read the whole sentence so that the sentence itself actually makes sense with the word that you think you've heard. And this one as well. Usually for each gap, it would be a different answer from in the previous gaps. So that's something else to, uh, to look out for as well. 
try to answer every question, even if you're not sure, because you never know, you might have got the right answer. Okay, so I'd now like you to turn to page 88. And I also need to actually get the audio because I thought that uh, we wouldn't have time to listen to the audio before the break, but we do, so I have to get the audio. So if you turn to page 88, and you're going to hear a student called Julie giving a talk to students in her year about the time her father was on tele a television quiz show. But before you listen, please read the sentences. So that the sentences that you see in the little box script thing. And try to decide what kind of information you need in each gap. So for instance, a number, is it a person, is it type of transport? What sort of word could go in the gap? It's like a noun, adjective or verb. So I'm gonna give you about five minutes to look through each gap and to try to make a little note of what kind of word you'll be listening for.
Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, because I just switched from my headphones, from my headphones to my speaker. Um, okay, so I'm just going to ask you all just to check what you think, what kind of information you think you're going to hear for each gap. So this first one, um, Lai, can you please read this first sentence? And when you get to the gap, just say what kind of information you think will be said here. You don't have to get the exact answer. A TV producer invited Julie's aunt to the quiz show while she was working in the noun belonging to the family. Good. I agree that it's a noun and it should be some sort of establishment that you can own and work in. So like maybe a shop or some type of shop, possibly. Okay, very good. And when you can you read this second one with, you know, what kind of information you think will be in the gap for number two? She didn't go because she was worried that she would be too an adjective to answer any questions. Yeah, I agree. So I haven't actually listened to the audio yet. So I actually don't know what the answers will be. So I'm, uh, I'm at the same stage as all of you, <laughs> waiting to listen to the answers. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I agree that it would be a, um, an adjective there. Good, to describe how she feels. Okay, Peyi, could you do the same for this third part? Julie's father use a now, maybe a transport to travel to the show. Yeah, I agree. Some form of transport. So I was like cheekily thinking time machine. <laughs> no, that probably will not be the answer though. <laughs> Would be cool. <laughs> okay, uh, Shino, could you please read the, the fourth one? When you went to the show, he forgot to wear her. I think it's a noun. Mm -hmm. Any anything else about this one? Uh, maybe it's about some things or equipment. Okay, yeah. So it could be some form of equipment or just something that you wear. It could be an item of clothing. Now, also you've got the ah here. So it's going to be a, like, I don't know, hat or a tie to look smart, maybe, um, or a pair of something. It probably won't be glasses, because normally when glasses, we would say he forgot to wear his glasses. So it probably won't be something like that. Okay, so Angela. Could you please read this one and tell us what kind of information you think belongs in that gap? He prepared for the show by learning large numbers of, I think, I think it's a noun from the newspaper. Yeah, I think it's also a noun as well because you do have this preposition here and it's something that you have to learn large numbers of. And, you know, some of these gaps, I've already guessed what the answers would be. So my guess is that the answer is probably going to be facts. It might not be. So <laughs> it might not be facts, but it, it's, it's a possibility. It makes sense, you know, in the context as well, because you can use the context to help you. OK, so. Uh, da -da. Uh, oh, Lai, did you read one already? I don't think you did, did you? Um, I already read the first one. Ah, you know, I was telling myself, like, why did you read? I think if you did, it was the first one. <laughs> Cor, could you please read number six? Uh, the, con the contestants were asked to wait in the now for the show to begin. Okay, anything else that you can tell us about number six? Uh, probably like a place. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be some place in which, you know, you, you wait. 
I mean, it might not be a common place. It might be a weird place that they were asked to wait in, but um, it's likely to be some sort of common place. Okay, great. Anthony, could you please read number seven? Anthony. Okay, I'm going to ask Alaya to steal your turn. Okay, Alaya, go. He, he competed against a, a bus driver and a bank employee. Uh, announced. I mean, announced. Okay, so is it, um, do you think it might be one noun or do you think it's going to be some sort of phrase? What do you think? I'm not sure. Because they're all, they're describing people on their professions. So a bus driver and a bank employee. So it might be more than one word. But it's going to be yeah, talking about occupation. Exactly. Occupation, employment. Exactly. So a bus driver, um, a bank employee, and it could be a teacher. Maybe one word or two words or scuba drive uh, instructor. <laughs> With some sort of noun phrase that relates to occupation. Oh. Oh, there's Anthony. Anthony, are you here? Are you with us? Oh no. Okay, so Anthony's connection is not so good at the moment. Hey, Peggy, can I ask you to read number eight, please? The contestants were asked questions on maybe a noun during the show. Okay, what kind of noun do you think? Now, this one's a bit of a tricky one because it's um, a specific, not a specific phrase, but to ask questions on is a specific way of wording. Uh, it's a specific collocation. So what do you think? What kind of noun is going to be here? Hey. Maybe, uh, the type of question. Okay, yeah, so it's going to be the subject. So like geography, questions on geography, questions on history. So it's going to relate specifically to an area of knowledge, a subject. Okay, so I'm going to ask us, uh, a couple of you again. So, uh, Wan Yun, could you please tell me about number nine and read the sentence? The show was broadcast almost a number after it was recorded. Okay, you think it's a number? It could be. It is possible that it could be a number. Okay, sorry, I'm just reading a message from Anthony. Okay, Anthony, that's fine. Please do watch the recording though, so you can learn about the reported speech. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Okay, so is there anything else that anyone thinks that uh, number nine could be? So it could be a number, you're right, but it could be something else. Yes, so uh, Elias said time, but time is still a number. But it is related to time. What else could we say related to time? <laughs> so I have a feeling that the word is going to be immediately. So it's an adverb, but it's an adverb that expresses when something happens. So yes, that is related to time, related to number. 
Okay, and Shinra, would you mind reading number 10 for us, please? Julie's father won a, an, a toy elephant. I think it's a noun such as price or a thing. Yeah, but because it says here, and the toy elephant, that's very specific. So it's likely that the word won't be prize. It's likely that it will be something specific that he won. So maybe a trophy or a, a holiday, maybe, I, I don't know, whatever it is he won. <laughs> I mean, I could absolutely be wrong because, as I said, I have not seen the answers yet. I'm in the same situation as all of you. But because it says, and the toy elephant, it would therefore be very odd if this was just a prize because this is specific information. Okay, everybody. I think it makes sense for us now to have, um, to have a break. Then we will do the listening. Um, then, of course, we'll go through the answers together. And then we will talk about the all interesting reported speech. <laughs> okay, I'll see you back here in 10 minutes time, everybody. Great work.
Okay, hi everyone. Are you ready to listen? Not to me. <laughs> oh, Shino, your hair looks lovely then. Okay, Kor, are you back as well and the lawyer? Great, excellent, thank you. Uh, so everybody, I'm now about to play the audio for you. I will share my screen so that we can look at the, you know, keep the text in front of us while we're listening as well. And let's see if our predictions were right. So I'm just going to press play now. Unit eight, listening part two, exercise two. So I'm going to tell you about my dad's 10 minutes of fame. It was when he starred on a TV show a few years ago, and it happened like this. The family had a small shop just around the corner from where we live. And one day, my aunt was working there on her own when a TV producer just happened to walk in and ask her if she'd like to take part in this quiz show called The Big Question. That was a big show, you remember, when we were small kids. I suppose he thought she'd look good on TV, sort of photogenic. Anyway, when she was asked, she just refused to even consider it. She said she was afraid she'd get so nervous that she'd be unable to say a word when a question came to her. My elder sister, who was only 11 at the time, told her she should go because it was the chance of a lifetime, but no one could say anything that would make her change her mind. Just by chance, at that moment, my dad walked in. Well, he saw his opportunity and offered to go on the show himself. Anyway, the producer agreed, and a couple of weeks later, my father took a hired car, because ours was very old, and he drove to the TV studios. I don't think he trusted the trains to arrive on time, but I reckon there must have been quite a chance he'd get stuck in traffic. You know what it's like around London. Well, anyway, when he got there, he suddenly realised that he'd left his tie behind, so he had to ask the producer if they got a spare one at the studio he could borrow. Anyway, he was told he didn't need one, or a jacket for that matter either. Oh, and I forgot to say, he didn't really study for the show, you know, by reading encyclopedias and so on. In fact, I don't think we've ever had an encyclopedia in the house, though I did suggest buying one for the occasion. I suppose he could have gone online, but as far as I know, he didn't. He told me later that the only thing he'd done was what he always did in the evening, which was read the popular press that we hadn't sold during the day and pick up lots of trivial facts. Anyway, later, what he told me was that before the show, he stood around with the other participants in somewhere called the Green Room, where they chatted to each other and were given something to eat and drink, and they got to know each other a bit. My dad felt a bit intimidated, I think, because the other competitors seemed very confident and looked really keen. My dad was expecting them to be doctors or lawyers or something, but in fact, although one of the women really was a university lecturer, the others were a bus driver and somebody who worked in a bank, so quite a mixture. When the show started, I think my dad felt quite lucky and very surprised to be able to answer his questions which were all about general knowledge and nothing too specialist, because he actually managed to win. Anyway, he did the show, which was recorded, and all of us were longing to see him in it, especially as we knew he'd won. We thought it would be broadcast like the following week, so it would be really up to date, but in fact, it came on nearly two months later, and we almost missed it, because we'd almost forgotten about it by then. But it was good, because for weeks after, people were stopping my dad in the street and saying, didn't I see you on the big question? Finally, though, 
my dad didn't become a millionaire or come home in a sports car, unfortunately. But he did win a big television with a wide screen. We've still got it at home and it's great for the football. And a big fluffy elephant, which he gave to me. They were pretty impressive prizes for us then. Well, for me, because I was still quite small. So that was my dad's 10 minutes of fame. I wonder what mine will be. Okay, everyone. Do you want me to play that recording again? Okay, so I can see a nod of yes, Mampei. Yes. Okay, and Lai as well? Okay, sure. You know, my when learning French, listening is my weakest skill. So I anyone here in the class who has trouble they're listening, I really feel your pain. <laughs> okay, playing again. Unit eight, listening part two, exercise two. So I'm going to tell you about my dad's 10 minutes of fame. It was when he starred on a TV show a few years ago and it happened like this. The family had a small shop just round the corner from where we live. And one day my aunt was working there on her own when a TV producer just happened to walk in and ask her if she'd like to take part in this quiz show called The Big Question. That was a big show, you remember, when we were small kids. I suppose he thought she'd look good on TV, sort of photogenic. Anyway, when she was asked, she just refused to even consider it. She said she was afraid she'd get so nervous that she'd be unable to say a word when a question came to her. My elder sister, who was only 11 at the time, told her she should go because it was the chance of a lifetime, but no one could say anything that would make her change her mind. Just by chance, at that moment, my dad walked in. Well, he saw his opportunity and offered to go on the show himself. Anyway, the producer agreed, and a couple of weeks later, my father took a hired car, because ours was very old, and he drove to the TV studios. I don't think he trusted the trains to arrive on time, but I reckon there must have been quite a chance he'd get stuck in traffic. You know what it's like around London. Well, anyway, when he got there, he suddenly realised that he'd left his tie behind, so he had to ask the producer if they'd got a spare one at the studio he could borrow. Anyway, he was told he didn't need one, or a jacket for that matter either. Oh, and I forgot to say, he didn't really study for the show, you know, by reading encyclopedias and so on. In fact, I don't think we've ever had an encyclopedia in the house, though I did suggest buying one for the occasion. I suppose he could have gone online, but as far as I know, he didn't. He told me later that the only thing he'd done was what he always did in the evening, which was read the popular press that we hadn't sold during the day and pick up lots of trivial facts. Anyway, later, what he told me was that before the show, he stood around with the other participants in somewhere called the Green Room, where they chatted to each other and were given something to eat and drink, and they got to know each other a bit. My dad felt a bit intimidated, I think, because the other competitors seemed very confident and looked really keen. My dad was expecting them to be doctors or lawyers or something, but in fact, Although one of the women really was a university lecturer, the others were a bus driver and somebody who worked in a bank. So quite a mixture. When the show started, I think my dad felt quite lucky and very surprised to be able to answer his questions, which were all about general knowledge and nothing too specialist, because he actually managed to win. Anyway, he did the show, which was recorded, and all of us were longing to see him in it, especially as we knew he'd won. We thought it would be broadcast like the following week, so it'd be really up to date. But in fact, it came on nearly two months later, and we almost missed it because we'd almost forgotten about it by then. But it was good because for weeks after, people were stopping my dad in the street and saying, 
didn't I see you on the big question? Finally, though, my dad didn't become a millionaire or come home in a sports car, unfortunately. But he did win a big television with a wide screen. We've still got it at home and it's great for the football. And a big fluffy elephant, which he gave to me. They were pretty impressive prizes for us then. Well, for me, because I was still quite small. So that was my dad's 10 minutes of fame. I wonder what mine will be. Okay, everyone. So, answer to number one. So, if you could read the, the sentence, the sentences with what answer you think belongs in the gap. Okay. So, Peggy, do you think you could read the first part? A TV producer invited Julie Ann to the street show while she was walking in the shop belonging to the family. Good. Excellent. Well done. In the shop belonging to the small family. Okay. Uh, Wen Yun, could you please read the second one? She didn't go because she was worried that she would be too nervous to answer any questions. Precisely. Good. Excellent. Angela, could you please read the third one? She didn't go because she was worried that she would be too. That's, uh, we've done number two. So this is number three. I'd like you to read, please. Oh, Julie father used a, used a hired car to travel to the show. Good, a hired car, excellent. And Laya, could you please read number four? When he went to the show, he forgot to wear a tie. <laughs> yeah, I actually predicted earlier that it would be a tie. I just, I just knew it. <laughs> it was going to be a tie. <laughs> and Cor, could you please read number five? He prepared for the show by learning large numbers of popular quizzes from the newspapers. Okay, that's not what was said. That's not what was said. So somebody else, so Shinro, what did you get for number five? Um, I didn't get for number five. Okay, did anybody get number five at all? Alaya, did you get this one? I write down the answer is trivial, trivial fact. Yes, trivial facts. And I'll type that into the chat. And everyone. Trivial facts. So this is just facts about general trivia. So the, the noun is trivia. Uh, general, we normally say general trivia. So like general information and facts about random things like the capital city of, of Greece or the tallest mountain in the world. So these are just like common facts that supposedly everybody knows. General trivia is not something I'm good at. <laughs> I do not know general facts. I'm rubbish at this. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And... Da, da, da. Okay, what about number six, Core? Did you get that one? Uh, I'm not sure, but I can try. Mm -hmm. the, con the contestants were asked to wait in the thing like green, I heard something like green ring for the show to begin. It was the green room. To wait in the green room 
I, I, I don't know, it's just called the green room. <laughs> yeah, I said that when we went through this, it was likely going to be somewhere very common. So like wait in the waiting room, but because it's included, I actually said that it's probably gonna be somewhere very specific that they were asked to wait. Okay, uh, Wen Yun, could you please read number seven? The contestants were asked to wait. Oh, no, number seven. He competed against a doctor, a bus driver, and a bank employee. Um, is that a doctor? He, no, they didn't. It was, the answer is not a doctor. Because if you remember, he said he thought that the contestants would be a doctor's, but they weren't. So the answer is not doctor. And also this word is competed. So lie, did you get the answer to number seven? Because it's not, the answer is not doctor. Mm, a universal, a university lecturer. Yes, exactly. A university lecturer. So remember when we looked at the exam advice before we started listening, um, one of the pieces of advice was that you should uh, watch out for extra information that's meant to, you know, confuse you. Or so, so they said that he thought that they would be doctors, but they actually weren't. Okay, so da -da. and number nine, Angela, could you tell us? Could you read this, please? The show was broadcast almost two months after it was recorded. Good, exactly. Two months. Okay. Um, just something to note here is that the the verb broadcast doesn't change in past tense. So we don't say broadcasted. It's we tend to say broadcast. It doesn't change. Okay, and Peyi, could you please read the final one? Julie's father won a big television and a toy elephant. Yes, big television. Doesn't it with a widescreen <laughs> television? I think just saying big television should be fine. Big television and a toy elephant. Okay, excellent, everybody. So now we can move on to the next part of our class. Unless you have a, any um, questions. Teacher, yes? um, I think we haven't discussed number eight. Oh, oh, God, you're right. Oh, that's my mistake. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lai. Do, do you want to tell us? The, uh... um, the contestants were asked questions on general knowledge during this show. Good, good, excellent. It is general knowledge. Oh, that was my mistake. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lai. What would I do without you? <laughs> okay. That should be all of them. Maybe we should begin the green room. Uh, yes. Okay, excellent. So I just want to point you now to the idea of reported speech. So yeah, this is a little bit more grammar, but um, not, not, not too much more grammar. <laughs> so in the listening that you, that you heard just a moment ago, there were lots of examples of reported speech. So have a, have a look at what the examples are here. She said she was afraid she'd get too nervous and be unable to speak when they asked her questions. So with reported speech, it's when you report what somebody else has said. And we tend to use reporting verbs. So she said, she claimed, he argued, she cried that she loved him, you know. <laughs> all of these different reporting verbs that you could use. 
Now, when we use the, the when we put the reporting verb, so for instance, said, into past tense, so she said, we tend to also change the rest of the, the verbs, oh, sorry, the rest of the verbs as well to match, to make it all past tense, even if what was said was in the present tense. And I will be showing you an example of this. So if, uh, if Shinro says to me, um, I always, I always do my homework. <laughs> then, and I, if I used it, if I repeated or reported what Shinro said using the present tense, then that means I don't have to make any changes at all. I can just say, Shinro says that she always does her homework. But if we want to change the reporting verb to past tense, then we have to change everything to past tense. So Shinro said that she that, that she did her homework. Yeah, I'm going to show you more examples of this. This is the little bit here. If the reporting verb said, told, admitted, or warned. So these are example report, uh, reporting verbs. In the past, we tend to change the original to a past form as well. I'm going to show you examples of this because I don't think I did very well with my <laughs> of my on the spot <laughs> example. Okay, so if somebody says, "I live in Berlin." and you were going to put said into the past tense, then she said she lived in Berlin. Let's have a look at an example, present continuous. I'm watching TV. He said he was watching TV. Now, I'm just going to use the annotation feature. Because we've put the reporting vo verb into past tense, I'm going to use a different color now. And it means we've also changed the rest of it as well. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I live in Berlin becomes she said she lived in Berlin. I'm watching TV. Has become, he said he was watching TV. I've seen the film already. That, that is present perfect. That changes to past perfect. She said she had seen the film already. Past simple. So it's already in the past. I missed the concert. Then we change it to past perfect. He told me he had missed the concert. I'll phone you soon. She promised she would phone me soon. So if what the person said is in the future tense, then we use would. So it's almost like if you're going to use the reporting verb in the past tense, then you change the original, you take it a step back. So if it's in present tense, it goes to past tense. If it's perfect tense, it goes to past perfect. If it's already in simple past, it goes to past perfect. Have a look at the example here. I like fantasy and science fiction. She said she liked fantasy and science fiction. So using the information here in the table, I'd like you all to try to type another version. So I'd like you to try to type number two using reported speech, just like in the first example here. So in the first example, I, you have to imagine that somebody has said this. So I like fantasy and science fiction. And here is how to change it into reported speech. And I'd like each of you to do that. For number two, three, four, and five, please. And if you could type your answers to each one into the chat. So how could we say, I'm getting my son ready for school? 
Now, you can make up the pronoun. So it can be he, she, they. It doesn't matter as long as you can put this into reported speech, like in the examples. So remember to look at the tense that's being used. So I'm getting, that's present continuous. So you should start here and use this target structure. Okay, good, Shinra. Correct. Okay, Alaya, some mistakes there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put everyone, actually, I'm going to be easier to do it this way. Peggy, good, that was correct. So, Alaya, in your version, you've forgotten to change the tense. You're missing the, the verb, the auxiliary verb to indicate the tense. So was getting. OK, so this is the correct answer. Let me just get rid of all those annotations. So he said he had already spoken to him. So Shinra Peyi, I think that you're already really getting the hang of this. <laughs> I thought that I'd explained it so badly, so I'm surprised that you're, <laughs> that you're getting it all right. <laughs> I've already spoken to him. He said he had already spoken to him. Good. And number four. Okay, core, you've forgotten to take it back a step. So it was already in past tense. So you need to take it back a step. Aha, good, exactly. So no. Yeah, yeah, the morning bit isn't really important. I'm looking mostly for you to get the <laughs> the, the grammar of the of the reported speech. Okay, and this final one. Also, he said is fine as well. So I'm just going to put a little slash here. He said he had visited them last Saturday. That's far, absolutely fine as well. And I'll just move this slightly to make this bigger so we can fit all the sentences in. Oh, it's not letting me. Oh. Okay, Wanyun, that's not correct. See what the tense is, future, and the future is down here, and it would need to change to would. Okay. She would. Okay. So. Okay, that's better. And good lie. Excellent. So she promised she would see you when she was ready. Okay, excellent, everybody. That's really good. Okay. So that's all correct. Thank you very much. Now, there are also, um, let's see, one, two, three, three modals that change as well when we use past tense and reported speech. And those are can, may, and must. Now, can changes to could, may changes to might, and must in the changes to had to. But we can't, just a little note down here, is that we can't 
always change must to had to. We, we can do it, except if must is in the negative. So if it says mustn't, then we have to keep mustn't. Or if it's a, a logical deduction. Okay, I know, I, I, I was wondering about that first as well, but the example is here. Now just get the annotation tool. I'm gonna make it slightly thinner. Okay. So if must is in the negative, then when we use reported speech, it stays the same. You mustn't tell Katya our secret. Anna told Stefan he mustn't tell Katya their secret. So if must is negative, we have to keep mustn't. And here's an example of the logical deduction. Arturo must still be asleep. She said that Arturo must still be asleep. So those are exceptions for must. So I'm just gonna put a little color around must just to remind you that this has exceptions. And also please remember that the only modals that change are can, may, and must. So if someone says, I can understand German, but I can't speak it. We'd say, she said she could understand German, but she couldn't speak it. So can, here can has changed to could, and can't, couldn't. Okay. And may would change to might. So if somebody says, I may give the book to John, as the reported speech, some suggested he might give the book to John. And let's have a look at must. In most cases, must can change. Must would change to had to. I must cook dinner. Tanya said she had to cook dinner. Okay. So we've had a look at here at can, may, and must. Can goes to could, may goes to might, and must goes to had to, except if it's negative or a deduction. Now, but the modal verbs could, would, should, might, ought to, and used to do not change. They do not change at all. Okay, so your job now, everybody, is to change these three sentences into reported speech. I've given you an example with can't, may, and must. Can you please give a reported version? of this reported speech. Again, you can invent the pronouns as you as you want. Okay, so that first sentence, she said she could have. Good, Peggy, that's very good. So I'm just gonna add that here. Why did it not let me do that? <laughs> ah, there we go. Oh, okay, you just need to change the she here. <laughs> Almost didn't spot that. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted. I just wanted to make the text red. There we go. Ah. 
Wen Yun, that's very good. The second one is good. So I'll just take Wen Yun's. Now I'll just temporarily move this over here. Okay, excellent, Wenyan. You've also done the third one. And I'm just going to remove the annotations because it does look a little bit scruffy, doesn't it? Okay, everybody, that's really good. Re excellent work. So please make sure you make a note of this because you'll be doing a speaking exercise um, for five minutes in breakout rooms. And when you come back from the breakout rooms, I'm going to ask each, each of you what your partner has said. So that would require you use a reporting structure. So for example, let's say Lai and Shinro are together. And I say to Shinro, okay, so what, what was Lai's answer to this? And Shinro has to say, um, Lai told me that she, yes, <laughs> good luck everybody. <laughs> Here are the questions. And I can also give you the presentation as well if you, okay. So we're now thinking back to the context of listening. How would you feel if you were invited to take part in a quiz program and why? So this is actually uh, talking hypothetically. So you can use conditionals. So I would feel. So there's also that like, difficult language as well. <laughs> what would you like to win? And have you ever won anything in a competition before? I'm going to put these instructions into the chat. Good luck, everybody. And don't worry too much if you get all of your reported speech wrong at this stage. This is quite literally the first time we're ever talking about this. If it's something that you guys are struggling with, we can look at this again and do more work on it. Okay, so don't be afraid, but well, not too afraid at least. <laughs> I'll put you into breakout rooms now just for five minutes. Remember to ask each other those questions, of course. Hmm. I see Nicholas is actually here, but I don't think he's really here. So I'm going to move Wen Yen to that room instead. Okay, sorry. Uh, back to move one. Okay, opening your rooms now. Everyone is in a two or a room of three. Okay, see you back here in about five minutes.
Hey, Cora. Hey, Wenyan. Just waiting for the others. And then we'll just discuss for like five minutes and then we'll end the class. Okay, hey everybody. Now I was going to ask you all to stay for a half an hour extra, but I feel just very conscious that because of the problem with the time earlier, that you've already been waiting like a long time. So we'll just discuss this for like five minutes and then we'll finish the class. So you have a usual length of time, two hours. Okay, everyone. So I am going to ask uh, Peggy, can you tell me uh, what Shinro told you? So did Shinro say that she's ever won anything on a competition before? She said she will feel nervous because it is the first time in part in the quiz program. It is really, sorry, there was some background noise. It was very difficult to hear exactly what you said. <laughs> Senior will feel nervous because it's the first time she took part in the quiz program. Okay, how about, so I'm guessing that if Senior you know, was talking about a previous experience, then therefore first time had taken part. If I understood that correctly. Because if Shibra was talking about a past experience, then she would have used past tense and therefore you have to change it a step back to past perfect, had taken part. Okay, thank you very much. And Sinjo, can you tell me a little bit about Angela? Did she say what she would like to win? Angela said she would like to win um, the first prize in a competition. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So da, da, da. said she wants, okay, because that's hypothetically, we can stick to wood. Okay, good. And Angela, can you tell me a little bit about Shinro? So what did Shinro say about how she would feel if she were to ever take part in a quiz program? She said she will feel anxious because it's the first time she took part in a quiz program and she will feel excited because it is a good experience. Okay, so we're talking hypothetically here. So she would, that would, that's good. Because if we go back to the slide here, would doesn't change. So good, excellent. So that doesn't change. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna to go to breakout room two now. I'm guessing Nicholas probably didn't speak to you, um, but Cor, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Wan Yun? So has, did Wan Yun say whether or not she's ever been in a competition before? She said she had never been in, uh, can I repeat your question? Uh, your answer is correct. Has she ever been in a competition before? Taken um, part? This, uh, she had never take, taken in this kind of competition. Okay, good. Excellent. And Wen Yun, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Kaur? Has he ever won anything before in, this, in a competition like this? He told me that he... He had won something like a trophy. <laughs> Good, excellent. Uh, out of interest, what was it for? Did, did he tell you? A teacher, can you repeat your question? Yeah, did he tell you what the trophy was for? No, he didn't. <laughs> Just said, I have won a trophy. <laughs> Maybe, uh, Cor, what, what did you win the trophy for? Uh, like what was the trophy for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are uh, all very interested. <laughs> uh, like, I don't know how to say, like, 
um, like what was the do you mean that what was the trophy used for? Yeah, like why did you win a trophy? Uh, why did I win? Because uh, because they gave me the trophy. Yeah, but what did you do to win the trophy? <laughs> did you run like really fast? Did you? Uh, uh, no. Did you play uh, really good golf? Was it netball? Uh, it's just not a big competition like the one we read in the book. Just uh, in the school competition, I get I think. Okay. Okay. At some point, you'll have to tell us exactly what it is that you did to to win the trophy. So, uh, like storytelling. Aha! Uh, uh -huh, there we go. So it's, I guess. it was a storytelling competition. I won a trophy for storytelling. This is how you can talk about that. So that's also another interesting topic for us to talk about is how to talk about winning trophies. Because <laughs> uh, there's some interesting language. Uh, you win a trophy for you know, doing something. Okay, so we'll just very quickly go through room three. So Lai, can you tell me about a liar? So what did a liar say that she would like to win? Um, she told me that she would like to win a prize in the competition. What kind of prize there? Um, she didn't say that. Did she say what type of competition? No. Okay, did she tell you about how she would feel if she were to take part in a quiz program? She said that she she would feel nervous um because she um haven't been to a TV program um before. So she okay, so because she hadn't I say taken part. She hadn't taken part in. Okay, good. Thank you very much. And Alaya, what did you find out about Lai? Mm, she said she will feel exciting and afraid if her answer wrong. Um, sorry, could you start that again, please? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. She said she will feel exciting and afraid if her answer wrong. So she would feel. So she said she would feel. Okay, good. Excellent. And has Lai ever won anything in a competition before? She said she have won a small notebook and pencil. So she said she had won. Okay, very good. Thank you, everybody. So I do have, there was an extra exercise, but this can be done as homework. And this is exercise two, page 89. And you simply, oh, it's, Exercise two, page 89, questions one to six. If you could complete the second half of the sentence so that it has a similar meaning to the first using the word given. Do not change the word that's been given. Just use two to five words, including the word given. Now, it was last night when I was uh, writing all of this. <laughs> So I'm sure that these sentences would be would require you using some reported speech. That's probably why I chose them. Okay, everybody, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask or anything you'd like to say about today's class? Would you like to do more project work or project style work like the definite word definitions you did at the beginning of class? 
well, you could maybe let me know in a private WhatsApp chat <laughs> how you felt about that. Because if you did like it, we could do more stuff like that. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. And I'm sorry about the, the time difference before. Yeah, the whole of the UK has changed time. And this happens twice a year. So right now it's only 11, 10 past 11 a.m. Okay, everybody. So I will see you all next week at an hour earlier UK time. <laughs> for, for me, at least. <laughs> for you, it will be the same time. Okay, see you next week, everybody. Take care. Let me know if you do have any questions, okay? Just send me a WhatsApp message. Oh, and I'll share this presentation with you as well. Okay, so here I'm sharing now, here it is, the presentation for today. Alternatively, of course, you can watch the video. Okay, so I'll see you all next week. You've done a really great job today. I'm so impressed with your definitions and with how good you are with reporting structures already. I'll see you all next week, okay? Thank, Thank you, teacher. Thank you so much, everybody.